While the industry loves to combine R&D, and we see this in every tech company's P&L, research and development are very different. Research is high risk, market making investments and discoveries that are unattached to products. Development is applying that research and others IP to create an end product or services. Development is less risky. Very few companies do research, and Intel has had a heritage in research for decades. One of the most exciting aspects of working as a tech analyst is, quite frankly, being one of the first to learn of these new, research-driven, cutting-edge technologies coming down the pipeline in the not-so-distant future, from the expected to the truly mind-boggling. As such, I always look forward to Intel Labs' disclosures when the company shines a light on its research initiatives to advance computing. This year's Labs Day event, held digitally, of course, featured the theme, in pursuit of 1000x, disruptive research for the next decade in computing, music to a tech geek's ears. The illuminating keynote for the event featured Intel Labs Managing Director, Rich Ulig, the director of Intel's Neuromorphic Computing Lab, Mike Davies and the senior principal engineer in Intel's Photonics Lab, James Jossie. The event covered various topics, including neuromorphic computing, quantum computing, integrated photonics, confidential computing and machine programming. Of these, I found the conversations around neuromorphic computing and silicon photonics the most compelling. Today I wanted to share what I learned at the event and define the two concepts for the unacquainted, let's face it, probably most people. Neuromorphic computing One thing that gets overlooked is that, as far as we've come with technology, we still haven't even begun to touch the brain's capabilities in some areas. During the keynote, Davies compared an autonomous drone with a cockatiel, a small parrot, native to Australia and famous worldwide as a pet, in terms of energy efficiency. The latest racing drones consume 18 watts of power, which means they must charge every 10 to 20 minutes. Additionally, according to Davies, these drones can barely autonomously navigate through a pre-programmed sequence of gates at a walking pace. On the other hand, a cockatiel can fly 22 miles per hour, forage for food, communicate with cockatiels, and even learn to speak a few English words, all with a 2-gram bird brain running off of an infinitesimal 50 milliwatts of power. We need to be able to get on that level. Neuromorphic computing, in a nutshell, refers to the futuristic concept of building computer systems capable of mimicking neurological brain structure. A neuromorphic chip seeks to approximate the way brains learn in real-time from external stimuli. Today's AI is limited in that it hinges on deterministic, literal interpretations of events. The next generation of AI needs to be able to address unique situations on the fly.